The memristor is actually the fourth fundamental passive circuit element. For about 200 years, we've known about three passive circuit elements, the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor. In the 1960s, there is this crazy guy at UC Berkeley named Leon Chua. Leon Chua is to circuit theory what Albert Einstein was to relativity. In the 1960s, Leon Chua, who was probably more of a mathematician than anything else, was the first person to put non-linear circuit theory on a firm mathematical foundation. He is known as the father of nonlinear circuit theory. In his nonlinear circuit theory, there was something missing. And if you think about the four fundamental issues that you try to think about in, in, in circuits, the voltage, the charge, the current, uh, and, and the flux, uh, there are six equations or six ways of relating those uh, four things, uh, but there are only three fundamental passive devices. And so what Leon postulated was, based essentially on symmetry and beauty, if you will, there should be a fourth fundamental circuit element. And he wrote down the equations describing that circuit element, and he wound up naming it the memristor. I'm a research scientist here at HP Labs, and we're working on commercializing memristor technology. So memristors were actually developed here in our lab about six years ago, and six years later, we've aggressively tried to uh, commercialize this. This is an example of a wafer coming out of a state-of-the-art uh, fabrication facility, and we've got thousands of memristor chips on this wafer. Now, a, the way a memristor works, we have a prop shown over here that's blown up about a factor of 10 million times bigger than this wafer, and what we have is at every single intersection point, we have one bit of data being stored. And the way it works is by just applying a small voltage pulse, we can create or break connections and that way either store a one or a zero. And this is a very small technology and a very fast technology. The other benefit is that we can actually add multiple layers. And so that is what's illustrated in this prop, where we've actually shown that you can actually stack four layers of these memristor uh, arrays and that way quadruple your data density. I'm Chris Campbell. I'm an associate professor at Boise State University, and my research focuses on a device we call the memristor. The memristor is a device that basically changes a property, and that property is called resistance. Resistance is the ability of a material to allow electron current flow. The great thing about a memristor is you can change this resistance and keep it in that state, change it again to another state, change it to another state, put it back to the original state, and if you think about it, you can actually imagine so many applications for a device where you can utilize this change in resistance. Our computers have advanced tremendously over the last 40 years, taking the same basic idea and just making it smaller and faster and smaller and faster. But our technology is plateauing. So whenever we hit up against a barrier, as we are now, we kind of naturally wonder, well, what can we do differently? The wall that we're coming up against with the current technology is one where we use memory bits that are either a zero state or a one state. They're one thing or the other. And we're trying to get as many memory bits into as small of an area as possible and we're reaching the fundamental physical limitations of being able to put them in a smaller and smaller size at higher and higher density. We just can't go any further. So how do you get around something like that? One way is to think outside of zero and one. Maybe memory is the resistance value. What if you can make a resistor that's continuously variable? We've got this new device that can be a new memory with all these states available, let's use it differently. And that's where people like Alex are going, thinking of completely different platforms and different ideas. A memristor adapts as energy flows through it. It gives you a new type of intrinsically adaptive hardware. So what we need to do is take this device and put it into our electronic systems and create new computers that adapt as they're used.